Welcome to a deep dive into the world of amateur ice hockey in Copenhagen. Ah. Forget the roaring crowds and the million dollar contracts. Oh. We are dropping the puck on the everyday athletes who lace up purely for the love of the game. Okay. Specifically, we're looking at KSF, Yeah. one of the city's clubs. Through the experiences of Benno Hansen, you've shared Benno's training logs, game summaries, even snippets of team chat drama. Get ready to geek out because it's about to get fascinating. What's captivating about this deep dive is we're not just analyzing plays or stats, but the heart and soul of this amateur league. We're talking about the personal journeys, the hurdles, the kind of camaraderie that comes with chasing a puck late into a Friday night. Speaking of dedication, Benno himself is a unique case study. This is a guy who crushes marathons, but still finds the time and energy to be a regular at the rink. And we're not talking casual Sunday skates here. He's crunching numbers like a statistician with a caffeine addiction, tracking calories, researching training tactics, even consulting AI about proper stretching techniques. That data-driven mindset is so incredibly revealing. It's not just about winning for Benno, but understanding the why behind every stride and shot. For instance, his meticulous tracking of shift lengths revealed a fascinating insight. Even a tiny increase in ice time significantly boosted his passing accuracy. Okay, let's unpack that for a second. We're talking about someone who's applying data analysis, something you'd usually associate with professional sports, to the amateur level. It really highlights a growing trend. Everyday athletes are borrowing techniques from the pros, even if the only reward is bragging rights at the local pub after the game. Exactly. It speaks to the dedication and desire for self-improvement that exists even outside of professional sports. Now, Benno isn't just part of any team. He plays for two KSF squads, Slow Motion and Senior Beginners. Both are known for welcoming players of all skill levels, which sounds awesome, but I imagine comes with its own set of, shall we say, logistical challenges. Absolutely. The materials you provided mentioned frequent schedule shifts, limited ice time picture practicing at 10 p.m. on a Friday night, and the inherent difficulties of coordinating a team with such a wide range of experience levels. And yet, despite the late nights and scheduling headaches, the sheer joy of the game bleeds through every page. One teammate describes it as, the biggest rush I've had playing sports in years, while another talks about grabbing electrolytes and celebrating a hard-fought game. It perfectly captures that blend of competition and camaraderie that makes amateur sports so special. It's a powerful reminder that sports, even at this level, are about so much more than just winning. It's about pushing personal limits, forging bonds, and finding joy in the shared pursuit of a challenging and clearly exhilarating activity. Okay, so we've established these guys are serious about their hockey, even with quirky practice times and Benno's spreadsheet obsession. But let's drop into the action. What does it actually look like on the ice? Time to lace up for a crash course in hockey fundamentals, but with insights pulled straight from Benno's experiences. First off, we've got the positions. Centers, wingers, defensemen, or backs as they're sometimes called, and of course the goalie. Okay. Each role has its own unique demands and quirks, especially in a league like this. And where does our data-driven friend Benno fit into all this? Well, Benno is a defenseman, which, as you can imagine, involves a lot of strategic thinking and ice awareness. That makes sense. It's not just about brute force, though. Benno does mention those legal bumps and jostles for position that happen even in a no-check league like this. Well, no, it is um. perfect, right? <laughs> even seasoned players have their oops moments. Oh. Speaking of which, Benno recounts a rather entertaining own goal incident involving a ricocheting puck and, wait for it, his own skate. Oh. It even bounced on the goal line a couple of times before going in. You can practically hear the groans of his teammates. Oh, I can only imagine. Talk about a bad bounce. Yeah. But let's talk about a fundamental rule that often trips up new players and leads to strategic maneuvering among the more experienced. Icing. Right. Okay, break it down for us. What exactly is icing and how does it play out in a real game? In the simplest terms, icing occurs when a player shoots the puck all the way down the ice from their own end and it crosses the other team's goal line without being touched. Seems straightforward, right? Yeah. But here's where the strategy comes in. That red line running across the center of the ice adds a layer of complexity. Hold on, so there's more to it than just shooting the puck from one end to the other. Exactly. If you shoot the puck past the other team's goal line from behind that red line, it's not considered icing. Experienced players use this to their advantage, strategically banking the puck off the boards or even intentionally icing the puck to gain a breather for their team. It's a great example of how a seemingly simple rule can become a tactical tool in the hands of seasoned players. It's like chess on ice. Wow. 
Speaking of strategy, Benno dives into the around the world drill, which sounds deceptively simple on the surface. It is in essence a basic passing and shooting drill. But what's fascinating is how Benno uses it to illustrate the complexities of teamwork and coordination on the ice, especially with a large group of players with varying skill levels. Right, it's one thing to execute a drill with a couple of teammates, but when you have a whole team weaving around, passing, shooting, it becomes a fascinating study in synchronization and spatial awareness. Precisely. You've got players rotating through positions, timing their passes, anticipating movements, all while trying to avoid being called offside. Benno even quotes an AI, ChatGPT to be exact, about how a single player leaving their position prematurely can disrupt the entire flow and momentum of the team. Which brings us to another key hockey concept, positioning. Yes. Benno highlights the triangle formation, a strategic maneuver used by forwards on offense. Can you elaborate on that a bit? Absolutely. Imagine three forwards spread out on the ice, constantly moving and passing the puck to each other. This creates a dynamic triangle shape that can be incredibly difficult for opposing defenders to break down. It's about creating chaos and exploiting openings, leading to those glorious scoring opportunities. So it's not just about individual skill. It's about working together as a unit, anticipating your teammates' moves, and being in the right place at the right time. Like a beautifully choreographed dance on ice except with more sweating and the occasional near collision. We've talked strategy, teamwork, even Benno's near miss with hockey infamy via that own goal. But this isn't air hockey we're talking about. What kind of toll does this sport take on the body, especially for someone like Benno who's already pushing his limits with marathons. It's a great point. Benno is very open about the physical demands of hockey, even at the amateur level. He emphasizes the need for both strength and stamina, mentioning how he incorporates yoga and weight training into his routine, specifically to prep for those grueling games. Which makes sense when you consider that he compares a weekend hockey tournament to a long distance race in terms of exhaustion. He even vividly describes his post-tournament state as feeling like a bag of courage. Wow. I'm feeling a little winded just thinking about it. Yeah. It really underscores that hockey is a full body workout. It's not just about gliding gracefully on the ice. It's about those explosive starts and stops, the constant jostling for position, even the occasional accidental bump that's typical in a no-check league. Right. It makes you realize that even though it's recreational, those competitive instincts kick in on the ice. They do. And speaking of upping the game, Benno recounts this elite training session he attended, led by none other than professional players Matthias Asprup and Oliver Reuter. Intense shooting drills, advanced skating techniques, it sounds like every amateur hockey player's dream. And what better way to cap off an intense training session than with a celebratory beer alongside seasoned pros? But what I find particularly insightful is the shift length debate that unfolds later. It reveals this fascinating tension between the recreational, purely for fun aspect of amateur hockey and the desire, even among casual players, to play competitively and have their efforts recognized. That's right. It's that classic, we're here to have fun, but winning is more fun dilemma. Exactly. And leave it to Benno, our resident data enthusiast, to actually back up those feelings with cold, hard stats. He meticulously tracked playing time during a tournament and found some pretty glaring discrepancies that were causing frustration among players. Yeah, it speaks to a desire for fairness and structure that often emerges in team dynamics, even when the stakes aren't particularly high. And this ties into a larger point Benno raises about youth hockey. He observed that in beginner leagues, kids are expected to show up consistently, put in the effort, listen to their coaches all, to earn a chance to advance to higher levels of play. Which begs the question, should those same expectations apply to adults in a purely recreational league? It's a thought-provoking question for you, our listener, to consider. What are the benefits and drawbacks of a more structured, performance-driven approach versus a purely recreational one? Food for thought as we continue our deep dive. And on that note of pondering life choices on and off the ice, we can't overlook the poignant moment when Benna reflects on the tragic death of his teammate, Lucien Piros, during a game. It's a stark reminder of the fragility of life, even when you're surrounded by friends and engaging in a sport you love. Absolutely. It's a sobering reminder that these teams become more than just players sharing the ice. They become communities, support systems, even extended families bound together by their shared passion. This tragedy led to the team implementing a no-one-leaves-the-ice-alone policy. 
a touching tribute to Lucian's memory and a testament to the deep bonds forged within this hockey family. It's a poignant reminder that even amidst the adrenaline and competition, there's a deep well of compassion and camaraderie within this community. And on a lighter note, we get a glimpse into another facet of Benno's personality that you wouldn't necessarily expect from a marathon running, data crunching, hockey enthusiast. Wait, there's more to Benno than spreadsheets and sports stats. Don't leave us hanging. Believe it or not, he's a longtime fan of death metal. You're kidding. Yeah. The guy who meticulously tracks his electrolyte intake is throwing up the horns to Cannibal Corpse in his spare time. Indeed, he even reminisces about growing up listening to bands like Death and Carcass. It's a reminder that people are complex and often full of surprises, with passions and interests that defy easy categorization. That's what makes this deep dive so fascinating, right? We're taken beyond the scores and stats, beyond the ice rink to explore the multifaceted lives of these amateur athletes. You've gained insights into the physical and mental demands of the game, the challenges and triumphs, the camaraderie, and yes, even the occasional death metal interlude. It's a glimpse into a world driven by passion, dedication, and the unwavering pursuit of personal growth, both on and off the ice. 